Hello and welcome to Knowledge 8. This is Animals and Habitats, Lesson 1. This is going to be read to you by my good friend, Rattenborough, who will be your guide in travels all over the world. Greetings, fellow adventurers. You are here to learn something new, and believe it or not, I'm here to teach you. I know you may be wondering what you could possibly learn from a rat climbing out of a dumpster, but I am Rattenborough, the famous rat adventurer. I travel the world looking at plants and animals and all the different places they call home. I'm going to take you on a special adventure all around the world. You are going to learn about some amazing and incredible places and animals. And we're going to start our exciting journey right here. I know, I know, it doesn't look like much, but it's special to me and it has everything I need. Welcome to my home. This is the alleyway where I live. Take a look around. What do you see? There are trash cans, litter, boxes, drains, and dripping pipes, old buildings and gutters. It's a perfect home for a rat. It has everything I need to live. All living things need food and water to survive. So animals need food, water, and shelter to stay alive. My food comes from these trash cans and the litter on the street. My water comes from the gutters, drains, and pipes. And my family and I have a shelter down under some steps nearby. All of these things make up my habitat. A habitat is a place where an animal or plant lives that has food, water, and shelter. It's true that my home, the alleyway, is not considered a natural habitat, like a forest or a pond. But with so many humans using up so much of the Earth's natural resources, some animals have been forced to survive in human-made habitats. What are the three things animals need to survive? If a place lacks any of these three things, then it's not a good habitat. Animals and plants usually live in habitats that are right for them. Just as people can't live underwater or in the air, plants and animals can't all live in the same sorts of places. You don't hear about elephants living near the North Pole on all that ice, and you definitely don't hear about polar bears living in the desert. Pumpkins don't grow in the sea, and fish don't live in trees. I can tell you firsthand that rats can't live just anywhere in the world. I don't like the weather to be too cold, and I need to live in a place where food is easy to find. That's why I like my cozy little shelter under the steps. It is warm enough for my family and me, and there is always plenty of water, and there's always a good supply of food in the trash. Ah, let's look around. You might have a park like this somewhere near your neighborhood. People like to spend time playing and relaxing in this park. But it's a habitat for many other things too. The grass, trees, flowers, and bushes in this park need food and water to live. The animals that live in the park share it as a habitat. That includes the pigeons that fly around looking for crumbs to eat, the squirrels, the owls, the chipmunks that live in those trees, the bees, fireflies, and mosquitoes buzzing about, the raccoons and opossums that come out at night, and even the frogs and fish in the pond nearby. This is a picture of a place called the Arctic. Do you think you could live easily in the Arctic with its very cold temperatures and snow-covered ground? <laughs> Not many things can live there, but 
Later, I'm going to show you some incredible plants and animals that do live in the Arctic. Most animals have to live in habitats that are specific to them. But you human beings are very clever. You can build habitats for yourselves. If you want to live in the desert, where there isn't much water with which to grow food or to drink, you can build a pipeline to bring you water for watering crops or for drinking. You can have food transported to the desert by road or rail because it would be difficult to grow food in the desert, and you can build houses for shelter so you don't have to sleep in the sand. In fact, people like you have been able to live in extremely hot, cold, and dry places. We're going on an adventure that will take us all over our amazing planet Earth. Over the next several weeks, I am going to show you some fascinating animal and plant habitats that might be quite different from yours. You'll see some wonderful and unusual places where things can live. I can't wait to show you all these interesting places, but first I have a lot to pack. Because we're going all over the world, I'm going to need a backpack full of gear. So hold on to your whiskers, I mean hats, and get ready for a marvelous adventure. <laughs>